Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at how professionals analyze stocks and um, what research and data is available for you as an individual investor. Professional investments, um, they, they are different approach to analyze stocks. Um, one is called fundamental analysis. This is one of the most popular approach with fundamental analysis and analysts will start with the, fundament the fundamentals of a firm. Fundamentals means the financials of the firm. So they will look at the income statement, look at the earnings uh, history, look at the balance sheet of the firm, uh, how much asset does the firm have, how much liability does the firm have. They also you know, incorporate the economic conditions, uh, the political uh, outlook as well as specific uh, information about the industry. The most important job of a fundamental analyst is to estimate future cash flows available to investors from the company. The intrinsic value of a stock is computed as the present value of future cash flows. So you already have some of the basic knowledge. You learn how to compute present value. Um, but uh, a fundamental analyst will spend a lot of time estimating what the future cash flow potentials are for a particular company. And then they will compute the present value of those potential future cash flow and, de and derive at an intrinsic value. They will comp compare the intrinsic value that they have estimated versus the stock price. And if they find a value that is higher than the current stock price, that they, they will classify that stock as undervalue and that is a buy. If the intrinsic value based on future cash flow potential is lower than the stock price, then that is overvalue and that is a sell stock. So that's how fundamental analysts go about uh, selecting and analyzing stocks. In addition to analyzing potential future cash flow, uh, a lot of analysts will also look at what we call a relative valuation. Relative valuation is to compare the price of a stock versus other stocks, uh, either in the same industry or in the stock market. Uh, they use different kinds of matrix metrics. Uh, one very p common one is called the P-E ratio. P-E ratio stands for price earnings ratio. So P stands for uh, price and E stands for earnings. A P-E ratio is computed as the earnings per share. So EPS, you'll hear a lot of these abbreviations in the stock market uh, chat rooms, uh, divided by the price of the stock. A high P-E ratio means that investors are willing to pay a higher price for a particular stock. So a stock that has a high PE sometimes are referred to as expensive, and a stock that has a low PE is sometimes referred to as cheap. However, a PE ratio is just one measure. Uh, a stock can be expensive because it has a very high growth potential. A stock can be relatively cheap, quote unquote cheap, because it has poor fundamental, uh, meaning it may have poor earnings, may have been losing market share. So there's reason for a company to be expensive or cheap. So just the PE ratio alone does not give you sufficient information about whether or not a stock is a good investment. A third type of analysis is called technical analysis. Technical analysis focus on the trends of, mu of the stock prices. You'll see people use graphs and they have all kinds of fancy names that goes along with technical analysis. Unfortunately, their history or their track record is not particularly good. Uh, research has shown that consistently that picking individual stocks is seldom, seldom outperform the market index as a whole. Let's try some technical analysis. Can you spot find a trend? Is this a downtrend or is this an uptrend? Is this the buying opportunity here? Well, I'll tell you the truth. This is a graph based on randomly generated numbers. So which means that there should be no pattern associated with this. This is not real stock price. And this actually looks quite a bit like actual stock price as well. So it's very difficult to, uh, in fact, there's no statistical research um, evidence that uh, technical analysis can generate abnormal returns. Here are some actual data. 
So is the stock market overpriced or underpriced? So this is the price earnings ratio. So this is the historic PE ratio. Uh, so the historic mean is 17.04 and the historic median is 15.93. The minimum is somewhere in the 1920s. So this is the first major stock market crash. Uh, so this is the lowest point. And the highest point so far is in 1999. This is just before the dot-com boom that um, happened in 2000. Uh, so is there a long-term average? Is there a trend? What is a correct price? And the answer is that it's very difficult to tell and, that, and the market can remain out of equilibrium for a long time. If you're really interested in choosing your own stock, the, there are actually quite a bit of um, information available for free for investors. Um, so this is, um, this is uh, publicly available information. You can obtain this for free. Uh, so this is an example of a stock. Um, you can find this um, in various places. Uh, so some of the things that we talk about are easily available. One of the things that we, you want to know to find a stock is its ticker symbol. The ticker symbol is typically a four-digit uh, character or four-character symbol. Uh, you can also look at the current stock price. Uh, we talk about the PE ratio. Uh, we also talk about beta. So this company has a beta of one, so it's about the same risk as the market. Uh, it has a PE ratio of 37.99. Uh, you also tell you what the dividend yield is, so forward dividend yield, um, and the trading volume, as well as the 50-week range. So you can see in this stock, the price over the past year, the past 52 weeks, can be has been as low as $60.78 and as high as $127.54. So that's a, that's a difference of almost 100%. So even though this stock has a beta of one, almost as risky as the market on average, but on an individual year, it, on an individual day, it can fluctuate quite significantly. Now that you have seen the fundamentals of stock and you have and you've seen the analysis, if you are, if you're ready to buy stock, how do you go about buying and selling stock? Uh, you can buy stocks through uh, a stock broker or a brokerage firm. And there are different types of brokerage firms. We have briefly reviewed them. Uh, you can use a full service broker or a discount broker or an online broker. All these broker fir brokerage firms buy and sell stocks via the stock exchanges. So these uh, brokers are members of these exchanges. Uh, the two largest uh, exchange is the New York Stock Exchange, that's NYSE, or NASDAQ. Uh, so most of these brokers will use these exchanges to trade your stock, but they can also trade with third party, particularly hedge funds. Uh, in fact, that's how a lot of online brokerage firms are able to offer commission-free trading. Remember, they have to make money somehow. So if they don't charge you a commission, then they are making money on your trade in a different way. Uh, they can also trade with its own account. If they trade, a bookage firm make the trade with its own account, then it doesn't have to pay a third party, such as the exchange or another brokerage firm uh, or a hedge fund. So the transaction costs can be different. Uh, but if you are a small individual investor and you are not a day trader, they are not really that critical. So now that you're ready to buy and sell stocks, how do you place your order? The most common type of order is a market order. To place a market order, all you need is two pieces of data. You give the brokerage firm the name of the stock you want to buy and how many shares. In addition to market order, you can place a limit order. A limit order, you provide three pieces of information, the name of the stock, how much you want to buy, the price that you're willing to buy the stock at. So a limit order limits on when the order will get executed. Uh, you also need to specify the duration, 
they can be good till the uh, good till cancel or good for the day. Good till cancel means that the re the order will remain in effect um, until you cancel it, or you can just say this is for just for today. If the order does not get executed today, then you'll automatically be cancelled. So if you buy a stock with a limit order, you will your order will get executed if the price is at or below the limit. When you sell a stock with a limit order, you will sell the stock the order will be executed at or higher than the limit. So that's important to to um to notice. As we said earlier for the duration, you can set the order for only one day or good till cancel. Another type of order is a stop order. A stop order is not active unless the price go below a uh, limit set in the stop order. A stop order is uh, a type of trading strategy. Lastly is a round lot. A round lot is 100 shares of stock. The reason why a round lot is important is because uh, if you don't buy a round lot, meaning if you don't buy 100 shares, your transaction is considered an odd lot and the commission for an odd lot is a lot higher. So now that you know how to place the order, what, what investment strategy can you employ? So unlike bonds, stocks do not have a maturity day. A stock will last as long as the company is in business. And some company has been in business for hundreds of years. So there are the most common and the most recommended stock investment strategy is buy and hold. A buy and hold strategy is the best strategy for long term and is famously the preferred strategy for some very famous um, analysts and investors. The reason it is the best strategy is because it minimizes transaction cost. And uh, if you the company offers it, you can even take advantage of the dividend reinvestment plan. They're called DRIP. What that does is instead of receiving cash dividend, you just buy additional shares with the dividend. Another strategy is uh, co dollar cost averaging. Uh, this is also a good savings strategy. Uh, this strategy, you buy equal dollar amount at regular interval. Um, the idea behind the dollar cost averaging is that you're not trying to time the market. You're not trying to buy low and sell high because that's extremely difficult to do as we saw in the graph that, you, that uh, we presented earlier. It's very hard to see when you're at the top of the market or at the bottom of the market. The buy and hold dollar cost averaging, those are both um, common investment strategies. There are other strategies as well. Uh, some investors buy on margin. Buying on margin is a very risky strategy. Uh, what that means is you're borrowing money from the brokerage firm to invest in stock. Uh, buying on margin greatly increases the risk. Yes, you also potentially increase your gain, but also as much as you can win, you can also lose. Uh, so in general, buying on margin is not recommended. Another, another strategy is called short selling. Short selling means that you're selling a stock that you don't own. This is a highly risky strategy because there is no limit on how high the stock price can go. What that means is it translates into an investor who is short selling can have unlimited potential loss. If the stock price keeps going up, your losses keep piling. Again, this is not a recommended investment strategy for everyday investors. To sum up, buy and hold is a good strategy. Dollar cost averaging is a good strategy. Um, buying on margin is not a good strategy. Short selling is not a good strategy. Next, we're going to look at stock options. Stock options is uh, an option give you the right to buy or sell a stock at a predetermined price. Uh, we call that an exercise price. Some options allow trading before the expiration day and not just on the expiration day. So there are different types of options. A call option gives you the option to buy a stock. A put option gives you the option to sell a stock. 
So how do you make money by trading options? If you buy an, if you buy a call option, then the, the stock price goes up. Then your profit will be the price of the stock minus the actions exercise price minus the option price. If the stock price doesn't go high enough, then the option expires and you lost the price that you pay for the option. Buying option is highly risky and seldom pay off, so it's not really a recommended strategy. But let's take a look at what option quotation looks like. So here are some stock options. Uh, so this is the current market price. The current market price is $117. And here are the different options. So this first option, these are call options. So that means they give you the right to buy the stock. And here's the strike price. So if you buy this option, the first option, it gives you the right to buy the stock at $100. The stock right now is selling at $117.16. So if you buy this option, you can, you can exercise it right away and buy the stock at $100 at the strike price and sell it in the market for $117.16 and you make $17.60 right away. So let's say how much does it cost to buy that option? It costs $19.95 to buy the option. So if you buy the option at $19.95, you will not recoup the cost of the option. In fact, if you look at all the options that are in blue, these are called in the money option. In the money option means if you buy this option at the current stri strike price, the current market price is higher than the strike price and you can make money. So, but if you take into account the cost of the option, then you're not making money. These are out of the money option, the ones in white, because the strike price is $120, which is higher than the current market price. So you notice that even those that are out of the money, the stock Price, the, the option price is still uh, is still positive. So let's say you buy this option that is way out of the money, two dollars and three cents. You spend two dollars and three cents on each option, and you uh, if the stock never reaches one hundred thirty dollars, then you lose the money that you pay for the option itself. Again, option trading is highly risky, is oftentimes uh, do not pay for the investment. However, option is a valuable tool for professional investors who want to buy insurance on their portfolio. Lastly, let's take a look at other alternative investments. So uh, Warren Buffett is a very famous investor. Uh, he he is uh, an investment legend in a way. Uh, in his uh, letter to shareholders, he classified alternative investment as investment that involve assets that will never produce anything, but that are purchased in the buyer's hope that someone else who also know that the asset will be forever unproductive will pay more for them in the future. So this is pure speculation. which is different than investment. Investment, you're investing in a company who produces a product that consumer likes um, and therefore are willing to pay for the product that a company produces. So you're investing, that is investing. Whereas a speculation is you are buying something that you know is unproductive, but hope that somebody else will pay a higher price for it in the future. Some examples that Warren Buffett used include gold, cryptocurrency, because this entity by themselves, this commodity by themselves are unproductive. They don't have any use. The only uh, value is if somebody else pay for them in the future. We'll conclude this chapter here and I will see you again soon in the next chapter.